Hello guys and welcome to TGN the Game Nerd, the show where I talk about our play games and today we're going to be playing Undertale. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and arrived in Snowden Town after going through a few more puzzles with Papyrus. And in this episode, we're going to just explore the town, see who we can meet, and hopefully progress the story. Let's go into the inn. Get it into the inn. Mom says that sleeping can recover your health above your maximum HP. What's maximum HP? Reminds me of a bit from Link's Awakening where it's like, I don't understand what that means because I'm just a kid. Welcome to Snowed Inn. <laughs> Snowden's premier hotel. One night is 80G. Let's go ahead and stay. Here's your room key. Make sure to bundle up. And we have to sleep up here with some loudly snoring neighbors over there. We get some nice little music out of it though. Hiya, you look like you had a great sleep. Which is incredible, because you were only up there for about two minutes. <laughs> Here's your money back. You can pay me if you're going to stay overnight. So we get all of our money back. This is basically a free heal, and plus, we have 30 HP instead of 20. That's nice. Don't want to walk to the other side of town? Try the Undersnow Tunnels. They're efficiently laid out. So yeah, this will be real useful for whenever we just want to jump from one side of the town to the other real quickly. But for now, we're just gonna keep talking to the locals. That lady over there, something about her disturbs me. Isn't my little cinnamon just the cutest? Bun buns are so adorable, tee hee. So yeah, this is kind of a joke about how in cartoons, how there'll be animal characters, like anthropomorphic characters, but they have pets as in like you know other animals so it's real weird also something interesting is that the uh in the japanese version of this game i think that the snowed inn is called the snow tell so either way they're puns i think it's funnier as snowed inn because it's also the name of the town but eh Awful teens tormented a local monster by decorating its tree-like horns. So we started giving that monster presents to make it feel better. Now it's a tradition to put presents underneath a decorated tree. So yeah, that explains Gift Trot from the last episode and also explains why they have Christmas down here. It's a carefully decorated tree. Some of the presents are addressed from Santa to various locals. Yo, you're a kid too, right? I can tell because you're wearing a striped shirt. This town doesn't have a mayor, but if there's ever a problem, a skeleton will tell a fish lady about it. That's politics. Welcome to Grillby's. This place is the fun little restaurant over here in Snowden. Uh, you're this guy. No matter where I go, it's the same menu, the same people. Help, I want some new drinks and <laughs> hot guys. Hmm, isn't human food different from monster food? It does things like spoil. And when you eat it, it passes all the way through your whole body. Disgusting. I'd love to try it sometime. <laughs> We're sentries, but we never get any respect. I wish those skeletons would throw us a bone. We love bones. You better watch where you sit down here, kid because that big guy will jump into your lap and give you lots of love and attention. I'm thinking of getting a spiked collar to show off my personality. It makes a statement like, attach a leash to me and take me for a walk, please. I can't, I can't do like Brooklyn accents, so I'm sorry for that. <laughs> Playing poker against itself. It appears to be losing. I put out a line for some girls today. Someone told me that there are plenty of fish in the sea. Well, I'm taking that seriously. I'm literally going to make out with a fish. 
So we know the guy who put his phone number into the on the fishing rod is. Those dogs are part of the Royal Guard, the elite military group led by Undyne. She's rude, loud, and beats up everybody who gets in her way. No wonder all the kids want to be like her when they grow up. The capital's getting pretty crowded, so I've heard they're going to start moving here. Hmm, I want to see the erasure of our local culture. But I definitely want to see some city slickers slip into their butts. Grilb said that he'd offer you a glass of water, but he doesn't touch the stuff. So yeah, just a nice little restaurant to stop by. Everyone is always laughing and cracking jokes trying to forget our modern crises. Dreariness, crowding, lack of sunlight. I would join them, but I'm just not very funny. We all know the underground has problems, but we smile anyway. Why? We can't do anything, so why be morose about it? That's fair enough. Let's, let's play monsters and humans. You aren't going to make me be the human again, are you? Ah, to be young again. The world sure felt boundless. Ah, what a beautiful knock. Maybe if I don't answer, I'll hear it again. Ah, my patience rewards me a weird character we have this wolf guy over here he's chucking ice into the water quite strange we'll get to that a little bit later also we just have this ominous area over here with nothing but water we have a few things here that we'll get back to later but for now let's head into the library or as it says on the sign library Welcome to the library. Yes, we know, the sign is misspelled. That look in your eye. You're someone that has trouble doing crosswords, aren't you? Of course, this guy will say something different if you answer uh, Junior Jumble uh, when Sans and Papyrus ask you what you struggle, struggle most with. I love working on the newspaper. There's so little to report, we just fill it with comics and games. <laughs> when I was younger, my teachers would give me word searches when they ran out of assignments. I thought they were a waste of time. But look at me now. I'm the number one word search creator in the entire wo underground. It's a school report about monster funerals. Monster funerals, technically speaking, are cool as heck. When monsters get old and kick the bucket, they turn into dust. At funerals, we take that dust and spread it on the person's favorite thing. Then their essence will live on in that thing. Uh, am I still at the am I at the page minimum yet? I'm kind of sick of writing this. While monsters are mostly made of magic, human beings are mostly made of water. Humans, with their physical forms, are far stronger than us. But they will never know the joy of expressing themselves through magic. They'll never get a bullet pattern birthday card. Here I am, writing this book. A person comes in and picks up the book. They start reading it. Oh, sorry, I'm still writing that one. Because they are made of magic, monsters' bodies are attuned to their soul. If a monster doesn't want to fight, its defenses will weaken. And the crueler the intentions of our enemies, the more their attacks will hurt us. Therefore, if a being with a powerful soul struck with the desire to kill... Um, let's end the chapter here. Monster History Part 4. Fearing the humans no longer, we moved out of our old city, home. We braved harsh cold, damp swampland, and searing heat. Until we reached what we now call our capital, New Home. Again, our king is really bad at names. Love, hope, compassion, this is what people say monster souls are made of. But the absolute nature of a soul is unknown. After all, humans have proven their souls don't need these things to exist. So, quick thing that I want to mention, that book that was talking about how if the enemy of a monster has more of a will to kill, then they'll be able to do it much more easily. That's basically their way of explaining the level up system in this game, and that actually leads to something uh, really interesting. Go ahead and skip to this time frame if you want to avoid spoilers for the genocide or no mercy route. 
But basically, in that route, if you have killed every single monster in the ruins and you get to Toriel and you attack her, you instantly kill her. It's not like in a neutral route, say, where you only kill a couple of monsters and then you fight Toriel and kill her, where it's sad. You just instantly kill her and she just dies. Okay, so now that's the end of spoilers for the genocide route. Another thing that I want to mention, uh, there's this video, and this video I think has spoilers for other stuff in the game, so I'd suggest, you know, playing through the game first and then going ahead and watching this video. But YouTuber Merg made a video called Undertale Remembers, which basically documents a, a really cool part of this game that I really love, is that... If you do something bad, the game will hold on to that forever and make you feel bad about it. The greatest example of this is, or not the greatest example, the second greatest example, the first greatest example is a spoiler. Uh, but basically, when you go through the ruins first and you get tutorial, let's say you forgot that hint that you got from the frogget where it was like, hey, Make sure to spare, even if there's no yellow, because you might need that someday. If you forget that or ignore it and you kill Toriel and then you feel bad about it and go back, uh, after you spare Toriel, Flowey will call you out on it. And, he, and he'll go through his speech at first where he's like, you think you're very clever, don't you? But instead, the text changes to, I know what you did. You felt bad, and so you went back and spared her or something along those lines. But it's, it's just so cool. That's one of my favorite parts about this game is that when you do bad stuff, the game remembers and it will let you know that it remembers. Anyways, back to the normal part of the video. Anyways, it's a mailbox overflowing with unread junk mail. This mailbox is labeled Papyrus. Look inside. It's empty. Yeah, so Sans isn't the best at coming out here to check his mail. Uh, let's head in here. It's locked. Ah, dang it. Here we have that other uh, warp over to... Well, not really a warp. The tunnel over to the other side of the town. We have a shed right here. It's locked from the inside. So I think this is... Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and go back and save real quick. And then I'll be right back over here. Alrighty. Let's go ahead and get moving. Human, allow me to tell you about some complex feelings. Feelings like the joy of finding another pasta lover, the admiration for another's puzzle-solving skills, the desire to have a cool, smart person think you are cool. These feelings, they must be what you are feeling right now. I can hardly imagine what it must be like to feel that way. After all, I am very great. I don't ever wor wonder uh, have what having lots of friends is like. I pity you, lonely human. Worry not, you shall be lonely no longer. I, the great Papyrus, will be your... No. No, this is all wrong. I can't be your friend. You are a human. I must capture you. Then I can fulfill my lifelong dream. Powerful, popular, prestigious. That's Papyrus, the newest member of the Royal Guard. This is the Papyrus boss fight. Papyrus blocks the way. We're gonna go ahead and check him first. Attack 20, defense 20. He likes to say, Nye -he -he. Nye -he -he. <laughs> This boss fight has a couple of really good gags. Like, there's one that, uh... Quickly, I need to explain that, uh... When I first recorded this... Oh. What? Flirting? So you finally reveal your ultimate feelings. Well, I'm a skeleton with very high standards. I can make spaghetti or I have zero redeeming qualities. I'll go ahead and say I can make spaghetti. Oh no, you're meeting all of my standards. I guess this means I have to go on a date with you? Let's date later, after I capture you. And so at this point, flirting is not an option. You have to keep pressing spare over and over. 
but I didn't realize that because I remember having an ex experience where I thought that I flirted as many times as I possibly could and I still didn't get the proper thing. But anyways, I just kept spamming flirting and so I thought I'd go ahead and cut that out and add in some post commentary just to make this fight more enjoyable. There's one bit that I didn't get on camera where it's like he keeps putting stuff behind his ears and then he starts realizing that he doesn't have ears. It's a really good bit. Anyways, once you finally spare... So you won't fight, then let's see if you can handle my fabled blue attack. So you just want to go ahead and sit here as all of the blue bones pass by you. Remember, blue stop signs. You're blue now. That's my attack. <laughs> You're blue now. So now flirting won't do anything at this point either. Let's date later after I capture you. And so you need to go ahead and keep spamming spare over and over again. Yeah, I don't know what exactly happened when I played through it that one time. What? I'm not thinking about that date thing. So yeah, just continue to press spare and you'll get by the boss fight pretty quickly. So yeah, with our blue heart now, or blue soul it is, uh, you want to... Yeah, don't make me use my special attack, and we'll get to that in a second. But with a blue soul, it's more like a platformer where you have to continually make jumps and dodges under these bones. I can almost taste my future popularity. Sometimes it'll try to trick you with, like, you think the attack is over. Papyrus, head of the royal god! But yeah, you'll think that the fight is over, or not the fight, the attack is over, and then one just comes in from the right side of the screen. Papyrus, unparalleled spaghetti! This boss fight has a really good song, so I suggest you listen to it. Undyne will be really proud of me! Smells like bones. <laughs> the king will trim a hedge in the shape of my smile. Sometimes I'm not the most perfect at these attacks, so go easy on me in the comments. My brother, well, he won't change very much. I'll have lots of admirers, but... Papyrus remembered a bad joke Sans told and is frowning. That's another great line. This whole fight is filled with great lines, so... Will anyone like me, like me as sincerely as you? Those moving bone attacks are always a bit tough for me. Someone like you is really rare! That attack is super annoying where it's like the, s the bones in the shape of a stairs and it's going down and it's really hard to get through. And dating might be kind of hard. This one is a bit tricky because you need to jump and then immediately stop moving. So be careful with that one. After you're captured and sent away. Yeah, that one is kind of tricky to get over because it's just so long, you have to be perfect. Ah, who cares? Give up! So yeah, it really helps to have the extra 10 HP from the inn as well as the bicycles. Give up, I'll face my special attack! Also, one thing to mention is if you get close to dying, he'll capture you and not actually kill you. And if you fail three times, then he'll just let you through out of pity. Yeah, very soon I'll use my special attack! More of this annoying attack. Papyrus is cackling. Not too long and I will use that special attack, so he's really trying to build up to it. You can tell that he really doesn't want to hurt us, it's just that 
you know, he has this dream of being part of the Royal Guard. This is your last chance before my special attack. Just more tight jumps. I'm surprised I got through that one. Behold, my special attack! What the heck? That's my special attack! Hey, you stupid dog! Do you hear me? Stop munching on that bone! Hey, what are you doing? Come back here with my special attack! I forgot I have to press A. Oh well! I'll just use a regular, cool, regular, a really cool regular attack. Papyrus is getting ready for a regular attack. Eh, uh, here's an absolutely normal attack. So this attack, even though he's disappointed that he has to use it, is actually, uh, can be a bit tough, especially on your first time playing through. So be careful with this one. I think this might be the last attack, though. These bones spill out cool dude, and then you have a bone on a skateboard with sunglasses. Now this one, just continue to hold up. Because there's a ton of bones and then this huge bone that you have to jump over. And then just this very tiny bone. Well, it's clear that you can't defeat me. Yeah, I can see you shaking in your boots. Therefore, I, the Great Papyrus, elect to grant you pity. I will spare you, human. Now is your chance to accept my mercy. And we will. Yo-ho-ho. I can't stop someone even as weak as you. Undyne's going to be disappointed in me. I'll never join the Royal Guard, and my friend quantity will remain stagnant. What should you say? Let's be friends. Really? You want to be friends with me? Well then, I guess... I guess I can make an allowance for you. Wowee! We haven't even had our first date, and I've already managed to hit the friend zone. Who knew that all I needed to make pals was to give people awful puzzles and then fight them? You taught me a lot, human. I hereby grant you your permission to pass through and I'll give you directions to the surface. Continue forward until you reach the end of the cavern. Then, when you reach the capital, cross the barrier. That's the magical seal trapping us all underground. Anything can enter through it, but nothing can exit. Except someone with a powerful soul, like you. That's why the king wants to acquire a human. He wants to open the barrier with soul power. Then us monsters can reach the surface. Oh, I almost forgot to tell you. To reach the exit, you will have to pass through the king's castle, the king of all monsters. He is, well, he's a big fushy, fuzzy pushover. Everybody loves that guy. I'm certain if you just say, excuse me, Mr. Dreamer, can I go, please go home? He'll guide you right to the barrier himself. Anyway, that's enough talking. I'll be at home being a cool friend. Feel free to come by and have that date. <laughs> And just like normal, Papyrus has a funny e exit. So that was certainly an experience. That was the Papyrus boss battle. Or boss encounter, I guess. And he'll be waiting right outside just for that date. So for now, I think I'm going to go ahead and end off the video here. And in the next episode, we're going to go ahead and have that date with Papyrus. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye!